I am here today to give you the announcement. Amen. Gloria is ill, and Joe, her husband, is hospitalized. And we pray and hope that they recover soon. Yes. Yes. Scripture of the day, scripture for the week, sorry. Colossians 4, 6. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. What's happening at St. Paul today? We'll start off with Sunday School. Sunday School is held every Sunday at 8.15. Please invite your friends and family to come. Today, our uh, Sunday School was very, very interesting. We talked about how we are allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for us. We, are, we have to always consider whatever we do, we must glorify God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Daily devotion. Our daily devotion is held on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 12 noon. Facilitated by Minister Daylon. Iron Man Call. Calling all men. Monday evening at 8 p.m. The phone number is 857 216 6700. And we uh, acknowledge all men to the uh, Iron Man Call. Amen. Stop and pray. It's on Tuesdays at 8 30 p.m. The same phone number, the same access code. Amen. Bible study is every Wednesday. On Wednesday mornings, we have the Pasadena group at 11.30 a.m. And then St. Paul at 7 p.m. The phone number is uh, on the flyer. It is the same message code. On October the 22nd, we're having our first annual church banquet. Amen. It's going to be a glorious occasion. It's going to be fun. Entertaining. Amen. The food is going to be wonderful. Right, God. Our theme God. is planted by God. Amen. Amen. Our colors are gold and white. Yes. The dress code is dressy. It is between it is the hours is four to eight p.m. Amen. This banquet is not just for women. This banquet is for St. Paul family members, their family and friends, yes. men, women, and children. Yes. Amen. The cost is $25 for adults, $12.50 for children. Amen. On October 23rd, we're having the church anniversary program celebrating 18 years. Amen. And that is going to be a wonderful occasion as well. It's going to be uh, led by our own revivalist, Tim Griffin. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot to mention, these are our wonderful flyers made by Barbara for the banquet. Amen. The tickets will be distributed today to the members of the committee. And we expect you all to do your best. Each member is required to sell a minimum of eight tickets. Each member will have their own table. So Amen. you're really going to enjoy it. We have great plans for you. Do we have any visitors in the house today? No? Well, I guess we're all busy. Okay, birthday celebrations are going to be held at the end of the month. Amen. So now we are in the hands of the deacons.
today. We magnify you today, Lord. We know who you are and he's living inside of us, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask you to bless us. Continue to bless us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done. We ask you to go into the homes of the sick and the shut-in, Lord, and heal, Lord, Heavenly Father. We thank you for our congregation, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, in this place. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you today, Lord. We give you glory, Heavenly Father. We reverence your name, Heavenly Father. Give him a praise in the house. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, you are a mighty God, and we thank you, thank you, thank you for another opportunity to come before you. Lord, just speak through your servant. Move self out of the way, Lord Jesus, and you come to the forefront. We know that you're a powerful God, and your word is amazing. Yes, Lord. So we take your word, Lord, and as we present it, you speak through your servant. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. 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 I just thank God for this opportunity to be able to stand before you. Do you have your yellow papers out? Amen. If you don't, please get them. Yes. And um, I hope I did the screen justice. I try to give you a little color every week, but uh, I'm not good at all of that stuff. But um, I thank God that it's there. Uh, is it readable? You all see it from where you are? Praise God. Praise God. I thank Sister um, Sequoia for all she does. Um, I don't take it lightly. Her and her husband are fantastic deacon and deaconess that are helping their pastor on every hand. Amen. There is a blessing uh, in doing that. I tell you that for sure. Um, God makes, makes that very clear to the pastor, those that work untirely and, and give their time and their efforts, uh, even when they don't like it. Sometimes we, we know how we are. Uh, and sometimes when that happens, and God, God just stand and watch and just see if you're just gonna persevere. And when you persevere, um, there's blessings that come behind that. I mean, major blessings. Blessings in working in the church. Um, this is God's house. Um, although we know it's a building, the church is in us. Amen. The more we get closer to God, the more we build the church. Yes. And God is blessing. He's still blessing us. Hopefully, I've been told, February or March, we'll have a brand spanking new digital sign out in the front. Yes. yes. So, uh, let's, I'm looking forward to that. God is amazing, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yeah. So we just give God praise. Do you have Exodus 30? Amen. Exodus 30. Amen. I'm going to go 34 through 38, and I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. However, whatever Bible you have is basically going to say the same thing. Y'all gonna pray for me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pray with me. Amen. Exodus 30, 34 through 38. If you have that, say amen. 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 Praise God. And the Lord said to Moses, take sweet spices and stacte and anica and galvanum and pure frankincense. With these sweet spices, there shall be equal amounts, amounts of each. 35 says, you shall make of these 
an incense, a compound according to the art of the perfumer. Salt, everybody say salt. salt. Pure mm -hmm. uh, and holy. Yes. Say it again. Salt. Salt. Pure, pure and, holy. and holy. 36 says, And you shall beat some of it very fine and put some of it before the testimony in the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Make sure you get that. Yeah. Um, the tabernacle of meeting where I will meet with you. It shall be most holy to you. Uh -huh. You all getting this? Yeah. Yeah. But as for the incense, which you shall make, you shall not make any for yourself mm -hmm. according to its composition. It shall be to you holy for the Lord. Mm -hmm. 38 says, whoever makes any like it to smell it, he shall be cut off from his people. Amen. And the title of this message is Can We Reflect the Purity and Holiness of Christ's Heart? Amen. Can we reflect the, the, pure, the purity and the holiness of Christ's heart? Amen. And look at what you're focused on, focusing on right now. The Holy Ghost being the pure reflection of holiness. Yes. The Holy Ghost being the pure per perfection of holiness. Now, before you sit down, let me just make something real plain. This is Old Testament. And you hear me say this all the time. Old Testament is a foreshadow of the New Testament. Now, some of you all in here don't know what foreshadow means. Foreshadow means this is a warning. It's, the Old Testament gives us a warning of, the, of what the New Testament or today's time is trying to tell you. And God didn't come to throw out the Old Testament, the Lord Jesus. He came to fulfill the Old Testament. Everybody got that? Amen. Yes. The Old Testament, or the foreshadow, rather, is a, uh, an enhanced notice. It's an enhanced notice. So, New Testament enhances what the Old Testament says. And when I was telling you, did you get that? Did you get that? This is a scripture that is powerful with New Testament stuff in the Old Testament. And so as I break this down to you in a moment, you must know that, the for, that a foreshadow is a pre-warning. It's an alert. Okay? It's a forewarning. Uh, it's a word of warning. And if you will, it's a video of what you're doing today. And that's going to be a video of what you should have did. So when God get when we get up to heaven to, to be judged, he's going to run a video. Do you think he won't have a video back then? I mean, then? Yeah. He's just telling us right here, right here, now. So he's telling us how to live. So as I go through this, um, I want you to know you're going to be reflecting, or you should be reflecting, the purity and the holiness of Christ's heart. Because most of us in here should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So we've got to be a reflection of who Christ was. Amen. Is. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Ooh, have mercy, Jesus. Yes. So as we see here, the Lord says, said to Moses, this is way back when. All right. When Moses was 
chosen as the leader of God's people. So he was telling Moses in this portion of scripture um, how to make the spices. Now the, the tabernacle, the tabernacle back then was just a tent. And they had sections of the tent. Okay. And so the Holy of Holies was the place where uh, they put the Ark of the Covenant. God made a covenant with the children of Israel. Everybody know what a covenant is? He made a promise to them. It was a pact that he made with them to promise them as they promised him. And we all, if we came to the Lord and gave our hearts to the Lord, stepped before the altar or stepped before the Lord, wherever we were, then we've made a pact with the Lord that will keep his commandments that will be obedient to his word. Mm -hmm. And so this is what uh, Moses was doing. He, uh, God had gave Moses how to make everything in uh, the tabernacle. Now, in Bible study, in the evening Bible study on Wednesdays, we're talking about King Solomon. Mm -hmm. Now, this is years later. King Solomon uh, is building a, a, a temple which is also a tabernacle, a, a temple for the Lord. His father, David, got all of the material, but David was a man of blood. And he was, in, a, in other words, he was a fighter. He was a man of blood. He was over wars before he came uh, to be a king that would rule and didn't have to go out and fight. Right. He could send people to go out and fight. But he was a man of blood. And so God said, I want, don't want you to build a temple, but your son mm -hmm. will build a temple. He had a bunch of sons then, mm -hmm. but Solomon was chose. Okay, man. So Solomon was giving uh, in, um, in the book of Kings and the book of Second Chronicles how to set up the temple. And the temple was to be set up just like the tabernacle okay. way before with Moses mm -hmm. and he set it up but this portion of scripture 34 through 38 of chapter 30 Exodus it's giving the same measurements the same thing and saying I want incense like this God is telling them how to make incense right. Right. and you saw you read you heard that it says, I don't want you to, to make it according to these for yourself. Right. And I'm going to tell you what incense are in a minute, which you'll see what a big foreshadow is. However, he's telling them how to make the incense. God himself is, is giving them the, uh, the, the, the ingredients, the anika, the, the, uh, the sakti, and the gal. And the, and the pure frankincense and, and the sweet spices. He's telling them what to put together, how to put it together. Whew, Jesus. Yeah. And then it goes on and he says, you shall beat some of it. Make it very fine. And then, then I'm going to tell you where to put it. You put it before the testimony. Mm -hmm. What is our testimony out in the front? That sign out there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yes. Anybody seen it lately? It's beat up, isn't it? it is. Praise God, because we're getting a new one now. Praise the Lord. You know why? That's our testimony. Yes. Yes. So our testimony has to be put up. It has to be straightened out. And it has to be able to talk to people. Yes. And now that we are in the time where people need to be talked to and not hollered at, it's a time now where the sign can do some talking for us yes. to draw the people in. Yes. Amen? Amen? Yes, we're supposed to go out. That's what we're supposed to do. However, we'll have a sign that draws the people in also. Amen. Yes. Amen. So, I, so as I look at this and, and as I study this, I found out that the Lord wants to put that, that testimony there. 
then he wants the incense when you're inside of the uh, uh, inside of the the, uh, the building mm -hmm. or the tabernacle mm -hmm. or the temple mm -hmm. when you're inside of it yeah. it's supposed to be something hear me now hear me close the incense are supposed to be something that is a sweet smelling savor to the Lord. What do, what, do people, what do people see when they come in the door? Mm -hmm. They see other people. Right. Right? right. Yeah. They, they see saved folks, right? Yeah. Hopefully they don't see folks with attitudes, right? Yeah. Are, are, are folks that, that don't have a relationship with the testimony that uh, when they're coming inside the church. Amen? Amen. Come on. So who are the incense? Where are the incense? Yeah. You see how much time God is spending in the scripture Come to on. tell Moses what exactly he wants in the incense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to be sweet smelling savers to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. supposed to be loved. The, yeah. uh, chapter um, um, 13 of 1 Corinthians says, if you don't have love at the end of that chapter, you don't have nothing. That's right. It says it very plain. Mm -hmm. If you don't have love, you don't have nothing. anything. Come on, Pastor. Say it. And so we're supposed to be a sweet-smelling savor. That's right. Over these 18 years, this has been a loving church. Yes. Oh, we have a little complaint here, a little, little complaint there. Yes, that happens everywhere. We're brothers and sisters. Yes. Who lived in a house where the brothers and sisters didn't argue? Didn't argue. We're brothers and sisters, amen? Yeah. amen? We have our little ups and downs, nothing wrong with that, but we love each other. Yeah. That's right. Don't let nobody else mess with us. That's right. That's right. Amen? amen? And so as we look at the scripture, the testimony is out there, then they come in and here's the incense. God says right here, look at what he's saying. He's, he says, after you, he says, make sure that the perfume or the person, oh, have mercy. Come on, Jesus. say it. Oh, I want to go faster and faster, but I got to wait and take my time with this. Will you let me take my time? Are you going to pray for me? Take your time, yes. The Lord is the perfumer. Jesus is the perfumer. Yes. Okay, come on, he man. knows how to put us together. Yes. He's given us through the power of the Holy Ghost yes. how to put us together. Yes. And when we look here and he's putting us together, he says, maybe you got to beat some of it. Very fine. Yes, come on, come on. Mercy, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I went through some mess before I had before I got truly saved. Come on. Come I on. did some things that I shouldn't have did. Come on. I went through a lot of things that I didn't have to go through, but God knew that I was going to be in this position on. one day. Yeah. I had no idea, but he was beating me, yeah. making me fine, and preparing me to be able to stand over a pulpit and yes. give his word in spirit and in truth. Yes. So here I am. Yes. Oh yeah, I've been beat. Come on, come on. Yeah, I've been refined. Yes, I have. I, and I'm not bragging, I'm testifying. Come on. Because I have to be the testimony that's on the front of the church. Yes, yes. come on, Pastor. I have to be the incense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He didn't want them real big. He didn't want no big incense. He just wanted regular. He even specifies to use the same amount on every incense. So I'm no bigger than you. You're no bigger than me. That's it. Come on. So therefore, the foreshadow of this verse is me being an incense, but I'm a body. I'm a person filled with the spices. Yes. And what is the spices? Yes. The Holy Ghost. Yes. The Holy Ghost is the spices. Yes. What's my attitude like? It should be spicy. Come on. All right. Amen. Amen. Should be. Holy it's hot. Yes. <laughs> Holy spices. Yes. That's right. What should be what what should be my character? Come it on. should be a loving character. Yes. What yes. should be my personality? My personality should be wanting. Oh, Sister Darling said something so beautiful in Sunday school this morning. She said, I don't care how angry I may be at a person, one thing I'm going to do.
do is feed them. Yeah. I just said, oh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's heavy. Yeah. That's heavy. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had that. Yes, 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 but the yes. Lord is still saving me. He's still getting me there. Come on, come on. I'm not going to stop. I ain't made it yet. But <laughs> he's still grinding. He's still beating me down. Yes, yes, yes. But what he's trying to do, he's trying to put something in me. Come on. He's trying, trying to put three things. He's trying to put salt. Come on. Now remember what I'm saying. Now will you remember what I'm saying? Come on. He's trying to make me pure. Yes. And he's trying to make me holy. Yes. Three things. Salt. Pure and holy. We've got to be salted. Listen to what the word says. First point, salted. We've got to be salted. Mark 9.50 says, salt is good, but if the salt loses its flavor, how will you season it? It says, have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. Come on. I've got to have the salt. Yeah, yeah. To have peace yeah. with one another. Yeah. Woo, I've been yeah. in church a long yeah. time. Come on. You know I've been in church a long, long time. But it was it was definitely some unsalted folks in the church. Come on, Pastor, say it. I don't want us to be like that. That's right. We're a loving church. We've been a loving church, and we're going to stay a loving church. Yeah. I had to tell some people. I just had to tell them, if you can't be loving around here, you might as well leave. That's right. Find a church where you can be like you want to be. That's right. But it's all about love. Yes, it is. It's all about the whole dynamic of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And that's love. And it's governed by the salt, yes. which is the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Ah, boy, boy, Lord. Have mercy. Lord. Lord. Yeah. Lord. Lord, you, you, you put a catalyst in that Holy Ghost that's called salt. Yeah. That salt tells me, okay, it's either you're way up here uh -huh. or you're way down here when you're supposed to be even killed. Yeah. Come on, come on. Even killed. Uh -huh. Oh, not, not too up there. Uh -huh. Not too down there. Come on. Not too high and mighty. Not too full of pride. Not doubting yourself. Yeah, exactly. Not low and poor. No, uh -uh, no, you're not supposed to be that way. You're not supposed to be poor in spirit because the Holy Ghost is not poor in spirit. That's right. Come on. He's full. Yes. yes. There's a fullness. Uh -huh. And that salt catalyzes that fullness, if you Come will. Yes. That, that salt takes care of everything. Yes. It's amazing that that salt been there for a long time. Yes. Yes. The, all, of, all the way back with Moses, all the way back with Adam and Eve, there was some salt between Cain and Abel. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Cain killed Abel. Cain had no salt. Yes, 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 yes. Something should have told him, don't kill your brother. Something should have told him, why are you so angry? Why are you so bent out of shape about the gift that you brought? You brought a gift. No, it wasn't as good as Abel's because your gift had selfishness in it. Your gift had your, your own mind in it. It had your own character in it, your own personality in it. What is in you that makes you want to kill? My, my, my. Something about the blood, though. Come on. Something about the blood. When he asked, when God asked him, where's your, your brother? Ah, he said, I'm not my brother's keeper. Still attitude. Ooh, still, still attitude. But what happened was Abel's blood spoke from the ground, and God got it all. Yes. My, my, my. You know why? Because it was plenty salt in Abel. Yes, yes, yes. yes it yes. was, oh, have mercy, listen. <laughs> it was salt that stabled Abel. Abel. <laughs> have mercy, Jesus. Wow. I tell you, I, I, I don't know if you understand this, but listen to this scripture, 2 Chronicles 13, 5. 
It says, should you not know that the Lord God of Israel gave the dominion over Israel to David forever to him and his sons by the covenant of salt. Way back then. Yes, 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 yes. So what are we using? We do we know the the the, uh, the makeup of the Holy Ghost? Do we know the words of the Holy Ghost? Do we understand? The Bible says, "My sheep know my voice." Do we understand the the voice of the Holy Ghost? Do we understand the guidance of the Holy Ghost? Do we understand the light of the Holy Ghost? Do we understand the path? Yes. We can't understand the path unless we understand the light. Yes. 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 How are we going to have our character, our personality, our, our anointing, yes. our quickening, mm -hmm. those things that give us the, the goodness of God himself? Yes. How are we going to know that? And how are we going to reflect the purity and the holiness wow. of who God truly is. Yes. Yes. Woo. Yes. I'm trying to hold it here. I'm trying yes. to go slow. Help me, Holy Ghost. So it says, it says, but as for the incense which you shall make, listen to what it says. As for the incense that Jesus has made us. Ah. <sighs> It goes on and says, but as for the incense which you shall make, you shall not make it for yourselves. If you ask, if you, if, if you went out and you uh, led somebody to Christ, you shouldn't walk around like you got a star on your chest. And you, and you did the best thing ever. Yes, you did a good thing, but you, that don't belong to you. That's right. Come on, that belongs to God. Yes. He's the one that chose that person. Yes. Yes. He's the one that's making them an incense. Yes. Let me tell us something. Go ahead. When we get new people in the church, you can't force them to be saved. That's right. You got to, oh, that's what my uncle used to say, her father. You got to catch them before you can skin them. In other words, I'm saying you've got to teach them. Right. A long time ago, they didn't do that. They would, they would really ridicule people that would come in. But you've got to love on them, yes. and you've got to teach them. Yes. And everybody don't get there. I, I think I'm still here because I'm not where I'm supposed to be yet. Mm -hmm. However, I may be the pastor, but God is still working with me. Yes. On, this is personal. Take all of this personal. Take it all personal. He's not through with me yet. He's not through with you yet. Yeah. And I always say, when we almost are ready to get there, I think the Lord will just say, come on up. Come on up. Yep. You're ready. Yeah. Yes, yes. But listen, the thing that you have to get in this is what are you reflecting? Mm -hmm. What if you got in a mirror and you looked in the mirror and somebody else came up? And, and, or what if you got a, in a mirror and you got right in front of it and nothing showed up? Mm. Oh, Think about that. So this word reflection means a lot. We've got to reflect purity. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. We've got to reflect personality. We've got to reflect joy. We've got to reflect happiness. Everybody's not happy all the time. We've got to reflect this. That's right. We've got to show it. Yeah. The Lord, he got angry, but he sinned not. Amen. 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 We, we've got to get this because when you look at this, look at, look at your paper. There's something that's there. I want you to look at that fill in. Salt is a covenant symbol of loyalty and connection to God. Salt is a covenant. Everybody knows what we said a covenant was, right? right? It's a covenant symbol of loyalty 
and connection to God. Amen? Amen. So that loyalty we have to have, I can't lie to the Lord. I got to have that loyalty that says, listen, Lord, I'm going to trust you on every hand. And then, I, then if I turn around and do something completely opposite, I'm not being obedient. I'm not loving. It's killing everything that I'm supposed to be. So look at Matthew 5.13. I want you to mark this in your Bible. Uh, listen to what it says. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, it says it again in Matthew. This is uh, Chronicles was Old Testament. Matthew here is New Testament. How shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. I don't know if y'all been up uh, been up the 15 freeway in the winter time, and they throw salt out. That salt is no good for anything but to be trampled on. So they drive over it so they don't, so it gets in the ground and it has an agent in salt that, that purifies. Uh, but it's not used for purification anymore because the salt has lost its, its flavor. It's seasoned, it's lost its seasoning. So they throw it out on the roads to kill the frost that makes you slide. Black ice, it kills all of that. It, it, it pushes, it, it just dissolves it. The salt dissolves it. Uh, it. Even when it's no good, it's still used to be trampled under feet. People trample on that. So they're, they, they put it out so their pathways and their driveways uh, uh, won't have the snow on it. It kills the snow. And it makes it drivable. However, it doesn't have any seasoning anymore. So it's something about salt in your life. Doesn't the Bible say uh, that, that we're the salt of the earth? Yes. We make the I think it's Luke. We make the difference. Do you know what this place would be like if all of the saints were taken out of here? Not my mind. Revelation talks about it. It talks about when we're raptured and when all of the saints are, are taken up, when he called all of the saints, oh, they're going to have three years of good, great, everything is happening, oh, everything's going to be good. And then out of that seven years, three and a half years is going to be good. And then that last three and a half years, oh, have mercy. I, I'm, you know, I'm reading the Bible every day, and I'm in Revelation now. And I'm going to start all over again when I get through with Revelation. But Revelations is telling me something again after the third time, what it's all about and what we are missing and what we have missed. But it also tells us what, what's going to happen when that day comes. And Christ comes back. And I don't know about you, but I've got to be ready. Amen. i got, anybody know when they go down? No. no. So you got to be ready. And this place is not going nowhere. It's here every Sunday. Amen. We got to get folks in here. And we got to pray for folks to come in. Yes. And we got to teach in our household. We got to teach when we're out. Oh, people will always come up to you and start talking to you because you are a saint of Christ. Yes, yes. And it's just, and I hate to put it like this, but it's just sorrowful if you don't know one scripture that you could tell somebody to help them to get to Christ. Just one. My mama taught me in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. And every time I went to somebody's house, I always said my blessing over the food. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. I was about six. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. And now that I know it so much, when I read it, it just jumps out. In the beginning, I'm going to be hitting it again. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. I had no idea. No idea. But listen.
listen to what God is telling us. Colossians 4 and 6. Here's that scripture that we had today. Let your speech, your mouth is like a rudder. It could turn the biggest ships. It turns planes. Come on. And just what you say can turn a church. Your household can be turned. On, your man. job can be turned. How many people has lost jobs because of what they said? Your jobs can be, everything in life can be turned with your tongue. Whether it's for good or whether it's for bad. So he says right here, that scripture for the week that you guys got to look at, take that pink paper home with you, or that lavender paper home with you. Let your speech be always with grace. Seasoned with what? Salt. Salt again, amen? Amen. Seasoned with salt. In other words, that salt of the Holy Spirit, it'll say don't say that. Don't, don't, say, don't say that. I learned that. Yes, yes. Years ago, in a church, mm. I learned that. Don't say that. That's what the Holy Spirit, the salt of that Holy Spirit, tells you what to say and what not to say. Uh -huh. Think before you speak. That's right. It says, your speech should be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how to answer every man. Do you know, this brother wouldn't have been with me almost from the very beginning of this church if I didn't love him. Amen. With my speech. That's right. Right, right. your words, yes. With my speech. Mm -hmm. You can't jump on everybody. That's right. You can't just say what you want to say when you want to say it. That's right. And how you want to say it. Yes. You can't try to get your point across when your point, a lot of times, don't mean anything. That's right. And I say that because confrontation is not necessary. That's right. Everybody get me? That's yes. right, Pastor. Pastor, why are you talking about that so much? Because the Bible just says it. Our tongues Come on. are not seasoned with salt. There's a time, Ecclesiastes tells us, for everything That's right. under the sun. Yeah. A season for everything yeah. under the sun. And it lays out time for this, time for that, time for this, time for that. And so we've got to, in the salt, I know it's still the first point, but in the salt, mm -hmm. there's got to be a time for everything. Do you know it's a time to to pray, it's a time to sit down and meditate and pray. It's a time to just stop, grab your Bible, and read and let God talk to you. Yes. Do you all know that? Yes. This is very, very important. The pastor is getting into this time now where we got to be right. I don't care about the seats. It's not about the seats. That's right. It's about our souls. Yes. Jesus is coming back, and I don't know when. I, I wish I could tell you, but I don't. No man knows the hour or the day, but I'm making sure that I'm telling you that we got to read our Bibles. Yes. We've got to read our Bibles. If you don't know where to start, start at John, Gospel of John. And see how much the Lord loves you. And then when you get that, when you get through with that, uh, just ask me if you don't know what to go to. Go to go to something. I'll have you going through the New Testament. Then I'll send you to the Old Testament, so it can tell you. Don't play with me. God says, "Do not play with me." He's telling us, but in His words, He's loving us. Yes, yes. Do you know Jesus was in the Old Testament? Yeah. Uh -huh. Jesus was love. Yeah. Uh -huh. And all through the Old Testament, yeah. here, here this, this portion, 34 through 38 of chapter 30 
of Exodus, that all of those verses are love because it points you towards goodness. That's right. It points you towards what to reflect. Yeah. Right. It tells you how important you are. Yes, it is. tells you that you are an incense that has been prepared by God with certain spices that are not supposed to be messed with by anybody because he prepared you for where you are right now. Some of you are all are in the church right now and you don't know what to do. He knows what he wants you to do. And in the classes, we teach what he wants you to do. You're not supposed to be just at home watching TV. No, he says, put me in the forefront. In other words, I'm not telling you, you got to just, just everything, you got to have a Bible right here all the time. No, I'm telling you to put things in perspective. That's right. God says, how much time have you given me in a year? Whew. Ooh, listen, it got quiet. <laughs> how, many, how much time, God is saying, have, have you given me in a year? I, I was a musician for years, and now I'm standing here seeing that that wasn't enough. I thought it was, but it wasn't enough. Who have you led to Christ in a year? Matthew 28, 19, and 20 says, go ye therefore and make disciples. What can I do to make a disciple? I could... Not bug them, but I could ask them and continue to ask them. Show them love. With love do I draw thee. Yep, Remember yep. that? Th that's how we draw. And so we've got to be salted. And when you start to do that, that's the road to becoming pure. Y'all still with me? Yeah. Yeah. Purity. Yeah. I want to reflect purity. How do I reflect purity, Pastor? Well, this is what I do. I've got to become pure. So Ezra 6.20, this is Old Testament, says, listen to the priest. For the priests and the Levites. You had the priests in, in the, in the uh, tabernacle or in the temple. In the temple or the tabernacle. You had the priests and you had the Levites. The priests did different things. And the Levites were the ones who who were the ones that go into the Holy of Holies. They were the ones who, to, who were able to actually go talk to God, yes. go be with God, and come out and tell the others. See, we don't have that now because the, the veil has been torn when Jesus Christ went to the cross. Right. Come on. Right. The sacrificial lamb, right. Right. the one that came yes. and yes. gave us a right not to just go into the temple, but he can also come. The God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit can come out yes. and indwell us. Yes. And yes. I, can I put it another yes. way? Yes. He can come out and make us the incense that he wants yes. us to be. Y'all yes. yes. kind of getting this now? Yes. Yes. So there's a power in being pure. Yes. God wants to purify us. How do I receive the Holy Spirit? Daily, I get up and ask for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You receive the Holy Spirit when you come to Christ. He gives you the Holy Spirit, but in Romans it tells us, at 18, I think it's 18 and 1, it tells us that we suppress the Holy Spirit. Mm. Come on. So if I suppress the Holy Spirit, I better get up and pray and ask God to fill me with the Holy Spirit every day yes, of my yes, life. Yes, Fill yes, me yes. with the Holy yes, Spirit. Yes. Lord, fix my incense. Yes. Woo. He's the only one who can give us those yes. spices. Yes. He can, he's the only one who can put us together. Yes. He can only, he's the only one yes. who, who can give us the sweetness yes. that we need. Yes. He can, he's the only one that's give us, that can give us the, the glory the light yes. of being able to draw someone near. Yes. Oh, have mercy, Jesus. Yes. I gotta be pure. 
It says the priests and the Levites had purified themselves. Yeah. All of them were ritually clean. Yeah. And they slaughtered the Passover lambs for all of the descendants of the captivity. Yeah. This is saying that those people that were taken away, mm -hmm. and we all learned this in the Bible studies, they were taken away uh, to Babylon. Those were all of the children of Israel. Babylon came and conquered them, and, they, and God said that they would be there for 70 years because they weren't pure. Yeah. 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 Because they had no salt. And they got taken away from their land. Everything was burned down and tore up. They took all of the gold and all of the silver. And they were in captivity for 70 years. And because it was because they had no purity. And they had no salt. And so it says, it says all of these are, this scripture is when they all started, well not all of them, but some of them that trusted, some of them were still, oh I can't believe it. Some of them were still there and didn't want to go back to their own land. Amen. And the reason they didn't want to go back to their own land, because they were still stuck. Yeah. And saints get Amen. stuck. Yeah. Stuck ones are the ones that don't tell people about Christ. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Stuck ones are, are the ones that don't and have no backbone to tell somebody about Jesus. Come on, Pastor. No backbone to, 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 to encourage them. To go to church. It don't have to be in this church. Ask them, do they go to church? That's right. Come on. Yes. Do they go anywhere? Do they worship anything? Come on. And if they say they worship anything, then you tell them who the right thing is. Amen. Yes, yes, Amen. yes. God, listen, God does the drawing. Yes, he does. You're just the picture that he pours out in front of them. My, my, my. If they're not ready... It's okay. You have put the seed there. Yes. So God just wants you to be ready. Come on. But we can't do it with sin in our heart. That's right. Cannot. We can't do it with lies in our heart. Come on. We can't do it without loyalty. Yes. Loyalty makes royalty. All right. Come on. All right. I tell you, I'm telling you. Ah. I'm yeah. trying to get it over to us. Yeah. We got to be pure. First Timothy 5.22 says, do not lay hands. Listen to what it is telling the preacher or anybody. But not. <sighs> Anybody been to those churches where they try to push you on the floor? Yeah. Put the, they did, first thing they do is just slap you upside the head and just, just pushing you on the floor. Yeah. <sighs> Holy the, the Holy Ghost doesn't act unseemingly. That's right. Come on. And it's not for selfish pride. Come on, Pastor. Listen to this scripture if you don't believe it. Paul was talking to Timothy. He says, do not lay hands on anyone hastily. Don't, 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 don't let that be the first thing you think about doing. You get up there and see. Oh, have mercy. Tell it, tell it, tell it. <sighs> it was this, 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 this was this lady and this man that was following Paul. And Paul was preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. And the lady's uh, master, uh, she, had, she had a gift of, of um, you know, seeing things. And I guess she called herself healing. And so she started following Paul, too. And she was just a distraction. Mm -hmm. And... and, and Someone that she was trying to talk to said something, and she got out of the way. And then that someone told, said, I know Paul, and I know Jesus, but who are you? Who are you? Paul had enough of it. And he told him, you, you got to go. Either you accept what I'm preaching, or you got to go. And so... Paul was te teaching Timothy right here, don't go putting your hands on folks real quick. Mm -hmm. You look at them. Let the salt. Mm -hmm. Let the pureness that yeah. your mother Eunice had, uh, had, had put inside of you. Yeah. Let the Holy Ghost talk to you and speak to you yes. before you go putting your hands on somebody. Yeah. 
Come on. He says, uh, hastily, nor share in other people's sins. Preachers get so, they get so caught up. We talked about this in Sunday school. Some people be drinking. Next thing you know, you having a little shot with them. Don't get caught up in other people's sins. Amen. Why is it a sin? Because God says, don't put anything unpure inside your tabernacle. Don't pour out your incense. Your, in, your incense. Don't, don't pour it out. Don't pour stuff on your incense. You are incense. What are you doing smoking something? So he's saying don't get caught up. And anybody said, what does this have to do with reflecting purity and holiness of Christ's heart? Come on. This has everything to, to do with the pureness and the holiness of Christ's heart. Everybody got that? Yes, sir. yes. Sir. That's why this is so important. Old Testament, foreshadow of New Testament. Yes. Warnings way back here. Yep. For us today, be careful. We're in the day and time where it's so many things Come on. that can take our attention and the next thing you know, you're going down a slippery slope and you're right into the middle of the sin that you said you weren't going to get into. Come on, Pastor. Sex. Yeah. Come on. Pornography. Unmarried sex, I'm talking about. Yes. Fornication. Mm -hmm. Adultery. Yes. All of those things. Don't get caught up. And the next thing you know, you're in that sin. And you have no purity. You have no holiness. And you have no Christ. Mm -hmm. My, my, my. Because you're not reflecting who Christ is. That's right. Oh, I know there's a fire and brimstone. <laughs> but I got to tell you. Just like it is. We have got to be pure. John 3, 1 John 3, 3 says this. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself. Do we want to purify ourselves? You hope you're looking for Jesus? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Come on. Are you looking for Jesus? And then thy will be done. Listen, listen close, listen close. On earth as it is where? In heaven. This is heavenly. And it's telling us how to be heavenly. Amen? Amen. Am I right? That's Amen. right. Y'all know the y'all know the, uh, the 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 motto prayer? As it is in heaven. Come on. They ain't doing this stuff like we doing down here in heaven. I know. If, if, if it is, this is our heaven. But we're looking for something so much bigger. Come on, yes. come on, Pastor. Yes. Revelations is telling me that right now. Yes. So yes. much bigger. Yes. Oh, have mercy. So if I'm pure, come on. if I'm salted, come on. then I can be holy. Yes, yes, yes. I can be holy. Yes. Oh, how many's holy? How many try to be holy? Right, right. That's it. That's what we got to do. We've got to try to be holy. This is not a, a message to condemn you. This is a message to lift you up. Yes, it is. Just do better than what you've been doing. I got to go home and do better. Yes. That's all. I have to go home and do better. Yes, yes. yes. Pastor got to do better. Next time you talk to me, say, Pastor got to do better. Yes. We all got to do better. Amen. Amen. So we can't just let this go lax a daisy. We just can't let it go. Come on, Pastor. Because uh, if we're going to be holy, uh, we've got to remember to be holy. Uh, and it is to be seasoned with salt and preserved and purified. Yes. Am I yes. purified? Lord, purify me. Yes. Come on. Lord, make me holy. Yes. Lord, don't take your joy from me. Yes. I got to be holy. Yeah. I can't get in arguments with my husband. I can't get in arguments with my wife. Somebody in the house has got to be holy. Oh no, say that, Pastor. Uh, when you're a parent and you put your foot down, let your
your foot be down and that's it. I wonder why I got hit so many times when I was in school. It's, 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 it's no discussion when it comes to kids that are underage. They get to the place where they're over, over age, then they can get their own. And that's a, that's a sour subject now. Because we, we, so, we so, you know, we, we make our kids gods. But we can't do that. It's, it's just something that we've got to realize. But I tell you, if the salt is there, Come on. the Holy Spirit will speak to the demon in the kid. Mm, that's right. Through Come on. you. Let me tell you how it works. The power of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. will speak to the demon in you or the kid. It will speak and the kid will know what you're saying. My mother had a real, uh, well, she had some sisters that beat their kids. <laughs> but when my mother would call and their sisters would be talking about, I had to beat him, I had to do this, I, she said, send him over here. And they would come over, and my mother had a way of talking to them. That's right. And they just started sobbing. They knew they were wrong. Sometimes you don't have to beat them. They know they're wrong because the Holy Ghost salts yes. that soul. Speaks to that soul. Yes. It goes past the mind, past the heart, to the soul. Uh -huh. The soul is stirred up by the power that's coming from you. Yes. Into that kid. Uh -huh. Talk to them. Hold them by the face if you have to. Make them look you in the eye and talk to them. Yes, yes, yes. And tell them, I'm telling you because I love you. You have years and years ahead of you. Come on. My mother did that, and I had no idea she would be gone at 52 years old. Come on, Pastor. But she told me who to mess with, who to talk to. She said, leave this person alone. She told me exactly what to do. And some of my, some of it I listened to, some of it I did, did, didn't, and I paid the consequences. Come on. But I could tell you, if you have the Holy Ghost inside of you, yes, yes. you become holy. You remember what you're doing. Uh, you will be able to talk that same type of talk. And you know what? That talk is the same type of talk that you talk to the people on the street with. Yeah. Because you don't do the choosing. God does the choosing. That's right. So he right. speaks from you because you're holy, because you're pure, because you're salted. He speaks from you, and he shows that person that it's him. Yeah. Oh, some of the men that are in, I'm talking about bona fide men men. This kind of man have been in tears at this church in my office. Because of the word that came forth. Not me, but God speaking to them. And some of them weren't saved and they knew that they needed to do something else. Yeah. Come on. Something different in their lives. I didn't speak. I was just a vessel yeah. speaking all. to that person. Uh -huh. And as I spoke, yeah. God yeah. came Lord, through Lord, and he Lord, touched Lord, that manly, Lord, that manly uh, attitude, that manly character Lord, and said, you are not as as you think you are. Come on, come on. I'm the man of all power. God has the power. Yeah. I am holy. So be ye holy as I am holy. That's what it says. Scripture says this so plain. Speak, Leviticus 9, 19 and 2. Speak to the congregation of the children of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy for the Lord your God is holy. First Peter 1, 14 through 16. As obedient children, not conforming to yourselves to lust as in your ignorance. This is what it said. I'm reading it to you. And it goes on to say, but as he who called you is holy, he says, also be holy in your conduct. Yes. Then it goes on and says, because
because it is written, be ye holy because I am holy. Yes. He wrote that for us. Yes. So how are we going to be holy? How are we going to be like Jesus? Yeah. How are we going to be able to stand in front of men and tell them the goodness of God? How are we going to be able to have the purity of the Lord Jesus Christ? How are we going to be able to have the holiness of the Lord Jesus Christ? How are we going to have be able to stand before God when that time comes? How can the Holy Ghost be pure inside of us, reflecting the goodness of God, yeah. reflecting our holiness. Yeah. How can that happen? Well, he did it all on the cross. Yes, when he went to Calvary's cross, yes. they hung him high. Yes. They stretched him wide, yes. nailed his feet, yes. nailed his hands, yes. pierced him in the side, yes. put a crown of thorns on his head. Yes. The blood that ran down was for you and for me. He was purifying us. Right then, yes. he was making us holy. Right then, yes. he was salting us. Yes. Right then, yes. and here we are today, yes. right, now, right now, full of the yes. Holy Ghost, yes. full of the goodness, Hallelujah. full of the grace, Hallelujah. full of the love, yes. full of the mercy for others, yes. full of the, uh, the the holding on to who He is. Full. Yes. Oh. Yes. He loved us. Yes. He kept us. Yes. He fed us. He's keeping us now. And so I'm so happy that that day when he went to Calvary, they beat him all night long. Oh, they spit on him. They hit him. But he stayed right there. He didn't try to run. He had a job to do. That job was to go and die on Calvary's cross. When that happened, the good news is he didn't stay there. The good news is that he got up from the grave after three days. When he got up from the grave, he got up with all power in his hands. Holy Ghost power, black power, white power, yellow power, green power. He got up with power. He didn't stop there. But he stayed Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
God knows. Thank you. The quickening of who God is is real. Truly, it's real. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you. Listen, we all got to do better. Amen? Amen. We all got to do better. We got to reflect Jesus. We can't be afraid. It's getting to the time. We're in the time where they're trying to pull everything away from Jesus. But we got to push back. We got to push back and let them know that Jesus is real. Yes, he is. And this place is not going to last. Come on. Oh, have mercy, Jesus. Thank you. We got to know that we know that we know Come on. that Jesus is real. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, uh, hallelujah. Thank you. He's real. He's real. You talking yes, about Old Testament? Come on. Yeah. It has everything to do with the New Testament. Yes. Whew. Help me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I, I want to let it go. I want y'all to go home like you probably want to do right now, but All listen. Right. Praise the Lord. Bible has taught me my people. You are his people. I'm his people. Yes. They perish because they don't know nothing. Come on. I'm paraphrasing. They, they, they perish because of the lack of knowledge. Come on. Say it, Pastor. They don't know nothing about their Bibles. My, my, my. I gotta preach like this. I, I'm trying to get y'all into heaven. Amen. Amen. I'm not gonna be like them preachers that preach and preach. Yes, and they don't go, they don't go to heaven. Come on. I'm going. I'm going to be waiting at the gate. I'm just, come on, hurry, come on, hurry up. Come in. Yeah. If, you, if the gates start closing, don't look for me because I'm going to be in there. I'm messing around. I'll be so close. You're talking about running like I'm here back there. I'll be running. You lady will come up in. Praise God. Listen, the Lord is for real, y'all. Yes, he is. is. And if I can do anything to help us get there, I'm going to do everything I possibly can. Yes, so it's up to me to tell us what this word is all about. Yes, yes, yes. After reading and reading and reading and preaching and preaching and preaching, what was my figures the other day? 18 years. Out of 18 years. And this, you know this wasn't me. Mm -hmm. This is my cousin right here. We, we grew up together. I mean, up. And after 18 years, I looked, I figured it out. It was 978 messages that I preached. And I'm saying, oh, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's not counting the ones that I went out. When we went to all of these churches that we... Yeah. Going to the breach. Yeah. So I'm right at a thousand. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm right at a thousand. You talking about somebody praising the Lord in my house? Yeah. I'm saying, Lord, this got to count for something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not about that. Yeah. It's just about being obedient. Yeah. Yeah. Reflecting who Jesus is. Yeah. Amen? Amen? That's what we want to do. And that's what we're all about. Thank God. Maybe someone does not know Jesus in the pardon of their sins. Maybe you're not sure that you're going to get in if he comes right now. If you're in that position, I'm calling for you right now. Come and give your heart to the Lord. We don't know if we're going to make it through a week, do we? That's right, Pastor. That's right. That call I got yesterday could have been so much worse. Woo, my Lord. So much worse. And they, they were freaked out. They were in, they had got home and they were still freaked out. And let me tell you something about social media. Be careful what you do on social media. My, my daughter got home and they, they don't even know her name. They didn't even, I mean, you know, nobody knew that. She was just in the car waiting on her daughter. She flew around. Uh, around that parking lot and she was waiting because she knew the coach was going to be coming with all of, the, all of his track kids. Right. And sure enough, they came. 
But the prayers of the righteous avail much. I want y'all to know that. Yes, when y'all yes, are praying, yes. that's why I tell you to pray. Yes. When y'all are praying, and, and we're, we're standing in the gap for each other, yes. God looks out for all of us. Yes. Yes, she yes. got on in the car, and they got home, and maybe about half an hour later, the media start calling her. I, I said, well, how did they start calling you? She said, Dad, you got to know how this stuff works. She said, they, they saw her emails, and they saw her name from the emails, and then they got, they figured out, okay, she must have saw something. Mm -hmm. And they got her number from social media. Oh, my gosh. Called her and asked her to start asking questions. She said, I didn't see anything. I was trying to get my daughter out of there. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get my daughter out of there. And I got a, on my phone, I got, she sent me a picture. She got one, two, three, four, I think four or five different media companies, journalists, with the same thing, trying to get information. So she could, she could have easily incriminated herself. Mm -hmm. Yes. I said, you didn't see anything, so you don't have to lie about nothing. Right. I said you don't and and they they will they will email you uh, yeah they will no they will Facebook you and when they Facebook you it's private so you don't have to take it or you can accept it but if you accept it it's going to open up even more mm -hmm. and I said don't accept none of that stuff you all all you know is you were trying to get your daughter and she said yeah that's all I, I didn't see nothing and so. Be careful. We're praying for each other, aren't we? Yes. yes. Praise God. That's what we have to do. Yeah. So if there's anyone here that needs prayer, if you're not saved especially, but if you need prayer, please come forward. We want you to, we want to pray for you and make sure that you're covered with the blood. And I know it took a little time, but however, it was necessary today. Is there anyone at all? God is amazing. He's really, really good. He really is. And I thank God for your mercy and his kindness. Father in heaven, you're a mighty God, Lord. And we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, of being able to speak your word and give your word and then pray for those that are, need, are in need of prayer. Touch them, Lord, in a special way. Touch these ministers on this podium, Lord. And the one that's on the organ, touch them in a special way, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Touch the deacons, Lord. Everybody that's in leadership, our trustees and, our, and all of our, our leadership, our, our commitment counselors, Lord. Touch them in a special way. So faithful, Lord. And we give you praise and we give you honor. Lord, thank you, thank you for the praise team. Lord, touch their voices, touch their hearts, touch their minds. Touch their souls in the name of Jesus. And as we're getting ready to take our leave, watch over us, cover us with your blood. Lord, pour that salt on us in the name of Jesus. And then make us just like you were. Patient and full of love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We ask this in Jesus' name. God, amen. Amen.